Network. Uh, once again, we get started here. My name is Pepper Daniels from the Crush 92.5, local radio here, supporting uh, all great things on the Central Coast, wine, beer, food, the great lifestyle that we have. Have a new uh, beer show on the air, Central Coast Craft Beer Radio. One of my co-hosts sitting next to me, Tyler Clark, uh, is from Libertine Pub down in Morro Bay. Uh, he and I and a couple other guys have been putting this show together for the last few weeks. Um, and I am here to do shameless plugs for it. So uh, Thursday at 5, Sunday at 5. Uh, tomorrow night actually is a replay of our first of two interviews with Matt Brennelson. You may have heard of him. Uh, he makes beer around here. Um, he's on the uh, beer show this week and next week. So, uh, we get a lot, uh, we have a lot of fun with Matt. So check that out. All right. We welcome up uh, to the stage here. This is green flash, everybody from San Diego. And on the far end, I got, uh, Pete corn down there. That. Pat, Pat Corn, Corn, sorry, Pat. And then next to him is a guy who stepped on stage before I asked him what his name was. So tell us your name. I'm Chuck Silva. I'm this, the, the brewmaster at This Green is Flash. Chuck Silva. All right, Chuck, tell us. Uh, let's give everybody just a quick 101 on Green Flash, then we'll get into these beers that we're pouring here. So a little bit of the 101 of, uh, of Green Flash. Okay, so Green Flash is in San Diego. We originally started in Vista. Now we're in San Diego proper for the last three years. Uh, this is my 10th year with Green Flash, as uh, Green Flash celebrates 12 years in uh, November. And then um, I think one thing that, that puts Green Flash on the map, or that, that really did put Green Flash on the map, is, is what we're still popular for today is the West Coast IPA. We launched that and released it in March 1st, 2005. So uh, we have a, a reputation for, for making very hoppy beer. Today we actually have the white IPA, which has got a nice citrusy hop and, and some really fun Belgian yeast, the Bastogne yeast. And then we also have Road Warrior, which is a new release for us, uh, Imperial Red Rye IPA. Uh, Road Warrior, we actually, um, it actually comes out of our, our Hop Odyssey series from last year. We actually had that on a draft. And uh, so it, it went over so well that we, we brought that in. Uh, as a, a release uh, for a you know, rotational release this year. So, And uh, just for clarification, the Road Warrior, that's the first one that's coming out right here. So that's what the uh, ladies are pouring here. So, Yeah, that's yeah. not the white IPA, <laughs> right? You guys make a beer that is that good, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, so what else can I tell you about Green Flash? Um, very hop-centric, an IPA house. We do brew a lot of Belgians. And we also play around with some barrels, and actually that's why, or one, one of the things that actually Pat has is, is really taken a lead on, he's our barrel master now, and uh, we have over 600 barrels, I think, filled in the brewery now, and four fooders. We're actually going to build another facility in San Diego that can house all that, and uh, so that way we can deliver more uh, barrel-aged beers. We, for the VIP, we actually had a beer that, that uh, came out of our, our Black Freak, one of our um, uh, Brett beer, uh, one of the Brett beers that we've developed, and then Pat actually infused some of our Flanders, the the one true uh, sour that we've developed, and he he got those two, blended them together, so we had uh, Black Flanders, and uh, that one already kicked. Did you get some of that Black Flanders? Yeah, there. Right, well. So Pat, why don't you have a two cents about it? And oh, well. so. Uh, yeah, Black Flanders. There's one keg I made, and I'll make some more maybe eventually. But um, it, it was, uh, I made it specifically one keg for today. Um, it was just a leftover keg of Flanders that we had racked out of, and I had some Black Freak going. And I just thought, oh, well, let's top it off and naturally carbonate it. And I left it for nine months. And to be honest, I totally forgot about it like it was back away um and kind of found it and tasted it it was like all right well it doesn't suck i mean so yeah you brought were, it up you were supposed to forget about it right so so you can have it here. yeah exactly yeah so <laughs> yeah but no i just brought it up for uh, bobby fox from western square who is uh my mentor and i would be nowhere I wouldn't be anywhere without Bobby Fox, so I just want to give a shout out to Bobby Fox. How about for Bobby Fox, the mayor of Paso? So you guys came in there to the new building. How long have you guys been in the new building now? 
Uh, we opened the tasting room June 1st, three years ago. Started production in July, uh, three years ago. And it's already pretty full there. How, how close are you to maxing out production in that in that building? I mean, it's uh, a nope. huge building. Yeah, we still have some capacity, but, but we've, we've moved uh, tanks in uh, ahead of schedule. So we so go back to, to Vista. Um, we grew to about 13, 14,000 barrels a year to max out a 10,000 square foot facility in Vista. We obviously had nowhere to go if we wanted to grow and, and we had demand still for the beer. So um, good problem to have. So we, we started looking for a building. Mike found us a building in, in Mira Mesa Boulevard in San Diego and uh, built the, um, the, the existing building, 44,000 square feet that was empty. It was used uh, by a trucking, um, a moving company for, for storage for sofas and household goods and stuff like that. So it, there was really nothing in it. So it was an empty shell for us to go in and do some infrastructure work, get our utilities in, drop a brew house, uh, awesome it's tasting a room. beautiful building too. Thanks. On the outside you drop with the, the curved glass in the front and everything. You're going, what? This can't be right. What is going on here? This yeah, I thought it looked a little funky at first. And then once we put the green flash sign up, I was like, okay, that works. You know, <laughs> it, it's all good now. But. Nice. And then... Uh, I know a lot of guys would probably be interested in the Alpine. You guys are starting to do a beer or two for Alpine on your facility to help him with production. And how did that come about? And how is sure. that working? And is that something that yeah. you're looking to do more of? Or? Yeah, we're, we're helping it pad out. Uh, let me finish just a little bit with the uh, facility at uh, 44,000 square foot facility. It actually is capable of brewing uh, 100,000 barrels a year with the, the 50 barrel brew house where we're able to brew uh, eight brews a day. Every three hours we can mash in and knock out a new brew. So it's a, it's a really dynamite, you know, you, you said it's a beautiful facility, but it's a great place to go to work, too. As a brewer, you get to go in. We have some good automation on it, but it's still tactile enough, I think, that, you know, you, you really have a good sense of pride when you go to work at, at Green Flash now, even more so than when we, you know, had to do it, you know, very manually, a, a lot harder. Um, so we have 100,000 barrel capacity. We're going to actually break ground. In Virginia, plan is to do that this fall to build another facility just like the one we have. So that'll be another 100,000 barrels of capacity that we'll build out, probably be operational the first quarter 2016. So go, go, going from a, a brew house that we extend that was you know a 25 barrel brew house that was all hand mash, hand grain out, and very small capacity. So no so mash we were, rakes at all? No, 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 that's, what, that's what we had, yeah. Ooh. yeah. So we, we had to really work hard and sweat it out. There's a lot of sweat that went into the Green Flash beer, literally. So, yeah, that's, that's the secret ingredient, yeah. So is it going to be a 50-barrel brew was, house on, on the East Coast That was our weight loss program. Well? Uh, uh, so 50-barrel brew house, it's, it's rakes, automated, sized for 16 to 20 Play-Doh beers, uh, full kettle volume, so, and... and uh, louders are you know 90 minutes to to two hours just real quick uh just to recap that road warriors out there now there i think about the last uh, little bit of it's been poured out if there's anything else you wanted to say on it while well, it's on people's pallets right now yeah so that started from hop odyssey the reason why we launched that beer last year in the hop odyssey is we got a hold of some of that mosaic that everybody's been raving about and we dry hopped that beer with mosaic and it was it was just a hit from day one dynamite uh, hoppy, uh, Im, you know, Imperial Red Rye IPA. So the rye, obviously, to, to give it a little dry spiciness uh, to help accentuate that, um, you know, like say a drier, more quenching red. And, and just to play along with the hops, instead of it finishing caramely sweet, which the caramel malt is in there, uh, you still get a, a really great hop character. Dry hopped with Mosaic and Amarillo. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, this is Green Flash, everybody that we're talking to here. The beer's uh, second beer is coming out. Can we now. get that up here too, so we could try it, please? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, this this is my first time doing this. If I do this again, I got a new plan of attack where we store the beers right behind us next year. We're thirsty. They come by us first on the way out. Just the same. This is the white IPA, right? Oh yeah, you can fill them up. There you go. Thank you, dear. We're not bad. We're not bad. You guys will be able to find all the interviews we've done here on uh, YouTube, right? YouTube, the Brewing Network. YouTube, the Brewing Network. And thebrewingnetwork.com. Yeah, they've got a bunch of great uh, stuff up there. A lot of podcasts, radio stuff, uh, videos, producing a lot of content about the beer um, on, that, uh, on that website. So check that out. 
And I'm going to try to steal all this audio for the Crush 92.5 as well. Um, all right, so next up, we're on to the White IPA. Let's talk about this one. White IPA started uh, as a collaboration brew. Uh, it was originally a collaboration between us and founders. And they, uh, we invited them to come brew with us when the Craft Brewers Conference was in San Diego in 2012. And uh, this is what we came to, is really, you know, kind of playing to our strengths. We have similar styles, I think, in, in the beers that we make. Uh, flavor forward and, and hoppy um, was, is definitely the common ground that we have here. And then um, we wanted to make it, how do we make it new and unique? And so we, we talked about different yeasts, and this was a yeast that we had in-house for, actually, for our, uh, one of our Belgian beers, Rayon Vert. And uh, so I talked to... Uh, I talked to Jeremy about it, and, and, he, and he got on board with it. He's like, well, and then we said, well, do we make it spiced like a, like a white ale, or do we, do we just rely on the hops? And we just pulled out all the hops that we had actually in the brewery and went through them and, and just relied on the hops to give it the whatever spice and citrus and whatever hop character it has. Do you guys ever run into problems, or not problems, but uh, everybody expects Green Flash. It's going to be a double, triple IPA bomb in your face and sometimes you'll release something you're like I I just want to make a Berliner Weiss you know I, I had uh, the Berliner Weiss when I was there maybe about a year ago that was incredible super stoked but it you know nobody thinks of that with Green Flash and has that been a an obstacle or is it kind of fun to be able to just sneak a fun one out that's not a hop forward you know bomb I, I, I uh, love doing the one-off beers and and I do think there are a lot of folks that expect us to make hoppy beer in fact we were when we were at the World Beer Cup, or no, I'm sorry, GABF, when, and we won three medals, three, two golds and a silver, and two golds were for Belgian beers. And I, and I heard people remark, I said, oh, Belgian beer, Green Flash, is that new? And I'm like, no, I think you're new. I think it's, it's, it's really the, the point. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like a, it's, it's not a hindrance to us, um, but we, like, we know what we're known for we know what people like from green flash um, I, I i think it's just we haven't really been able to do the one-offs as much as we want to because uh, you know we have salespeople who want you know what we're doing full time uh, and then the one-offs are you know like what we really like to do um, and the barrel stuff you know and i think we, we we're just finally at a point where we can start doing some more kind of one-off stuff and you know do a you know like like gordon said you know like a session sour like like that's just a brilliant idea you know so that's something as we go on i think that you know it, it, it yeah we're gonna have a pilot system we're gonna we're putting in a five barrel pilot system we're gonna have a barrel house um but getting to that point takes a long time i mean you know how it goes with barrel stuff or just one-offs you know it's like you, you you still have to make hophead for minnesota or you still have to make west coast for new mexico so and there's only so many tanks and so much time of the day so what about that berliner vice is that was that a one-off I, I i've never seen that again i saw it once in the tasting room and I think I drank like four of them in like an hour because I was so excited. Yeah, is, is Bobby in here? I saw we have some of the of our crew in here. Well, so we we have a uh, uh, some teams that we we got together as an effort to get some of the creativity out of the you know not just me coming from all the members of the team. So we put some teams together, and that was one of the beers that that came out of it was hey let's make a, a Berliner Weiss, and I was like well can't just make it straight up because you can just go buy a Berliner Weiss. So what are we going to do that's going to make it unique? Well, we made it Saison tart, right? So we actually used the Saison yeast and still did that Berliner Weiss kettle souring to do that. Uh, yeah, so cow, uh, kettle sour and then boiled it off, did the Saison fermentation after that. Just, that. That was a one-off and that was just for draft only. Just real quick, anybody's got questions? Uh, there's a microphone up here. We're going to open up to questions here as we talk, but... Uh, so you did ask a question already, uh, Alpine and Duet. So Pat McElhinney is a good friend of ours, and I've known Pat for a good while, brewing in San Diego. And um, when Mike Hinckley heard that, that Pat was looking to get some beer made, you know, outside of his facility, um, he, he just called him up and stepped in and said, hey, we'll, we'll make some beer for you. So, and, and I was really surprised that it, uh, how that has transpired in that we, we're just making it for him at cost. 
So we're, we're not charging him even, you know, $5 a keg or anything like that. It's just whatever the cost plus the overhead. And, and so he, we're making some beer to help him raise some funds. So hopefully he can uh, build a larger facility going forward. So we've already brewed uh, Nelson for the first, you know, first tank of Nelson. And then we brewed a duet, and that's been, both those beers have been out in town. And then now we have a Hoppy Birthday coming through the system. So those are the three beers that he selected that he wanted us to brew for him to help him out. About one tank a month, which is a 250-barrel tank, who yield about 200 barrels because of the high hop rates. And how much is that of his capacity, of his annual capacity? Oh, that's like, that's like four months. So, uh, Pat, so that's about four yeah. months worth. What's cool about brewing Alpine for me is that um, I met Pat. He and I took classes at Davis together probably uh, 16, 18 years ago. And um, he's been a friend of mine for a while. Um, and so when the opportunity came up to brew for them, and in my opinion, I think Alpine's probably the best brewery in San Diego. Um, I just love everything they do. I love their like how they do it, their work ethic. Um, and... For us to be able to help them out is like a really, really cool move by Mike. Um, I don't think, I don't think there's any other brewery in San Diego or in even California that we'd be like, all right, well you can come in and you can brew and you know they they, they don't just write a check. They show up, they show up throughout this whole process. They're there on brew days, um, so it's been really cool for us. And it's, I mean, dude, we get to drink Nelson every day. So I mean, come on. <laughs> Seriously. All right. Anybody got any questions? You guys want to step up and ask any questions? We encourage you to do so. Come on up and uh, say hi. The microphone's right over here. I see somebody coming up for a question. Given. But just uh, real quick, one of the – so I came in a little bit late today, and then one of the first thing I came over here just to kind of check in and see what was going on. And one of the first things is David Walker saw me because he was over here and he walked across and, and sh reached out his hand to shake hands and invite me and, and you know, to say welcome home, which, which actually made me feel great because he knows that I was actually born in San Luis Obispo and I, I went to school in, in San... So I'm Slow super... Uh, super yeah, so I lived in the Tascadero. era. I was super uh, proud to be here and, and super stoked uh, that uh, Firestone Walker invited us back again and um, for this great festival. Yeah, so real quick, let me expand on that then. So a Tascadero boy, A-Town, what do you think of this craft beer movement that's happening on the Central Coast then? Now, you have the San Diego perspective because that's where you live and work. What do you think about what's happening up here in this part of the country? Super exciting. What, what else can I say? Uh, we, all, we all love craft beer. You can see that. Just look around and see how many people are here just for, for the cause. And um, and in fact, yesterday I, brew, I brewed a, a little collaboration brew with a Barrel House, one of you know one of the up and coming uh, local breweries. So nice. we we got some uh, sesh, hoppy session beer coming from uh, Green Flash uh, through Barrel House, and uh, so maybe three weeks we'll be drinking that. Definitely. All right, let's go ahead. I want to thank Y Stone Walker for bringing everybody out, and this is fucking cool. But let me ask you about the breads. You guys are going to do another bread? Can you, ref can you rephrase yeah, the question? Yeah, I, I like the Brit beers, but those, I know they're a pain in the ass, so I'm wondering if you guys are going to do another Brit beer out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll start, and then I'll pass it to, to Pat here. So what we've done in the past is uh, we, we got a red wine barrel, one red wine barrel, and we put Lafrique in that barrel, and it did pick up some Brett character about eight or ten months down the road. And then, it, and then we just kept it, and it evolved even more. So maybe 15 months into it, we said, oh, wow, it, the flavor has really developed. We racked it, we, we served it, and we called it Super Freak. And from that, we kept that culture going. We added more red wine barrels because we liked that character and uh, discovered how much um, I liked the, the French oak over the, over the red oak for these beers. We also did our Saison. Saison Diego, we put in these red wine barrels with the same brat culture. And you know, it's a fruity apple blossom, um, apple-y kind of a, a brat character. So it's really a very pleasant, refreshing uh, character. It gives a little uh, tartness, a little, um, you know, a little, little refreshing uh, tart quality. And so that Saison becomes a little freak. So those beers have been in development for a long time. And now we're 
we're growing them up in a much bigger way. I'm going to pass it to Pat now so you can expand. Well, yeah, uh, when I took over about a year and a half ago, the barrel program, we had 50 barrels. I think we have about 650 now. Uh, the first thing I did was I took a culture from the mother barrel and had White Labs isolate our house Brett strain, which I then introduced slowly, um, you know, over a year and a half. And now it is... The house bread is in pretty much everything we do. So uh, my idea with the whole barrel program is that I want to have four to six really great, solid Brett barrel beers that we're going to have throughout the year. Uh, and then as far as the one-offs, yeah, I mean, there's, there's 600, like I said, there's 600 barrels. There's probably about 18 different kinds of beers right now. Uh, and we're just... Yeah, looking good. So yes, we're. I paid that uh, guy to do that. We love Brett, um, and we're just continuously trying to trying to work the barrel program up. We, we pretty much take when we do the Brett beers, we're taking a existing beer that we make all the time and then putting our spin on it. So there's not like a, a there's an, there's a finish idea in the head of Chuck and myself when we're making this beer that we talk about, and then we just try and make that. I appreciate it, man. You guys are doing some of the best shit, and uh, you're doing some of the best shit out of San Diego. I appreciate what you're doing. Keep doing Thank it, you. man. Thanks, brother. Awesome. Appreciate it. I think we had another question over here, yeah. Love the beer. Been a big fan. I want to know the uh, reason for starting Green Flash and the inspiration for it, too. Re reason you the started what? and the inspiration. Inspiration, yes. Well, neither one of us were there from the beginning. That was uh, Mike and Lisa Hinckley are the founders of Green Flash, and they had some uh, friends and co-investors. And actually, Mike kind of inherited some brewing equipment. He was an investor in a, in a brewery in, in Carlsbad that actually didn't work. So he actually had to go to court and settle because the guy was an absolute jerk. And uh, so he, he kind of ripped him off. So he had to go to court. Well, he didn't get any cash back out of it, but he, got, he ended up with the brewing equipment. He said... With, with his tenacity and determination, he said, well, damn it, I'm going to make this thing work. So he ended up putting the brewery together or having to put it back together. And then uh, he, he got some investor friends to pitch in some money to, to make it go. And they were sitting around brainstorming and trying to figure out what they were going to call this, this new brewery, uh, startup brewery, back in uh, 2002. And uh, they, they, they paused uh, from their brainstorming, put their notepads down. They, couldn't, they hadn't settled on anything yet and said, well, let's, let's go watch the sunset and watch for a green flash. And so they, somebody, I, I guess, turned and said, well, what about green flash for a name? Well, and somebody said, well, that's on my, on my list of, of you know, company names. And um, so then they just all agreed and green flash became the company name Obviously, you know, a Southern California kind of a, a vibe is what's is conveyed with the name. You know, taking it under the right conditions and the right perfect conditions, you can actually get a sunset. And then taking that theme into, into the beer, so having the right conditions, you know, you, you're going to have your, your perfect beer. So, so that was kind of the, uh, the beginning for Green Flash. And then... Um, the, the focus actually was on session beers at the time, session ales. It's kind of funny. We're talking yeah. about session beers. So the, the, the whole focus was going to be six-pack poles of session pale ale, uh, a session red, and a, and a nut brown. And uh, it's funny. That when I came on board, I reworked those recipes. We won World Beer Cup and GABF medals for all three of those beers. And then we slowly retired them as we started launching new beers. So the West Coast IPA, uh, after I came on in 2004, we, we brewed West Coast IPA. By 2005, March 1st, we released West Coast IPA. By August, it was our number one selling beer. And so then we started retiring the session beers. And then, it yeah. It still is the most, like, that's Yeah, it's still number beer. one. It's yeah. more than 50% yeah. of our production to date. And now we're actually nationwide with our distribution, all 50 states. We actually closed the loop with uh, Utah and Hawaii. So nine years later, it's still our number one. Nine years later, it's number one. 
West Coast is number one. Well, I just wanted to say, too, kind of on a personal note as well, with uh, you guys were talking about with um, Alpine and doing that and then talking about Barrel House. And uh, with the pub, Libertine, we actually brewed our first year on Barrel House system. They didn't charge us any extra. We'd buy our own grain, do that. And I just want to say thanks to those guys and the local Barrel House guys. If you guys haven't been there yet, check them out. Super nice guys about the industry, and they're doing something very similar to what you guys did. Let me brew there, bring my stuff back to my place, and it was uh, – it got us to where we are now to be able to do that. And it was, uh, just want to just say thanks about that. <laughs> All right, everybody. How about it for Green Flash? Pat and Chuck, uh, make some noise right there. These guys killing it down there. Thank you guys for joining us. Sure. Cheers. Thank you. We've got just a few minutes. We'll take a break. And then uh, some more New Zealanders are going to be joining us from 8 Wired. So stay tuned.